What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Denaric Wolf, and welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts 2 Geography Now Latvia this time. Heading back to Europe, which is great and all, except for the fact that Europe is still blisteringly hot as, as of today, August the 21st. So, um, which is why I don't have a shirt on, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> or is it actually just to show off my sick gains? Yeah, check that out. Okay, so anyway, those who are too, too weak can click off the video right now. Those who <laughs> enjoyed this are pretty weird <laughs> so anyway let's just get right into the video geography now latvia uh one of only three baltic states and only two baltic uh, languages left really it's the latvian and the lithuanian yeah i know so sad can we get f's in the chat for our latvian and lithuanian brethren <laughs> there were the prussians back then which is where the Prussians got their name. They were a Baltic uh, people group, but um, as we know, the Prussians were technically the Germans. So, <laughs> yeah, and they created Germany, blah blah blah, so forth. But we'll talk more in the in the video. Jargon for now, Latvia. Paul, what do you got? Who created? Who 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 built Riga? It's actually the Germans. Guys, we've reached the Baltic once again. If you don't know anything about the Baltics, it basically goes like this: Estonia is a depressed yet attractive nerd girl who lives right next to. You can't play with us, Estonia. Welcome to the first sister of the creepy Baltic twins. Are they known for being creepy? <laughs> I didn't know that. Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. Look, I'm sorry I called it the creepy yeah, Baltic twins. Yeah, I know, twins, ironic, it's isn't it? True. Latvia is one of those countries that just kind of naturally Dude. this ambiance of. That is okay. <laughs> that was not that cool, but that's pretty cool. I do like dark forests, and uh, I did have a actually. I, it is right now, or no? It used to be in my uh, background picture on my on my. Uh, uh, computer but this was like a perfect place to like uh film a black metal like <laughs> song isn't countries it countries that just kind of naturally exudes this ambiance of charming mystical dark undertones this. surrounded by subtle flares of despair and they're cool with it and here's the thing latvia sorry it was like somebody was coughing in the background did you guys hear that uh, try to turn up the 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 sound surrounded by subtle flares of despair and they're cool with it and here's the thing latvia I'm hearing is things. the good <laughs> twin <laughs> No, but seriously, jokes aside, Latvia does come with an incredibly... Oh, God, I can't unsee it. I'm going to need some bleach after that. Earth. Let's find out where it all goes down in. <laughs> oh, Latvia, He's not that like good looking like me. Show ever. <laughs> Let's jump in. First of all, Latvia is located in the northern European region known as the Baltics due to the location on the Baltic Sea, surrounded by four other countries. The country is divided into 110 municipalities and nine republic cities, with the capital Riga located along the aptly named Gulf of Riga. Yeah, that's right, 110 municipalities. But keep in mind, though, most Latvians like to reference the five historical regions of Latvia for cultural distinction. Kurland, Semigalia, Salonia, Vitseme. Whoa, 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 that did not sound like Kurland. I don't know much about the Baltic languages, Actually, out of all, out of all, like the Indo-European languages or like the European languages, probably the least I know about the Baltic languages. Even though it's called Balto-Slavic language group, so you're, you're telling me that it's somehow related to Slavic languages? It's a freaking truck out of my window. How does that cur Kurzland? It looks like Kurzeme. Distinction: Kurland, Semigalia, Salonia, Vitseme, and Latgale. Speaking of Kurland, fun side note: Latvians actually okay, once that colonized looks like Africa and the Caribbean under the Duchy of Kurland. They took over Tobago, and remember in the Gambia episode we talked about the Kunta Quinta Island? Yep, that was Latvia. See, guys, you gotta watch those obscure African country videos. Like those are Say the what? ones with the strangest backstories that give you the best secrets or was, for history. Anyway, or was that the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth? Because Latvia didn't really, you know exist back in the day it was there of course but it was part of different empires like the yeah like i already mentioned the uh freaking uh, polish lithuanian commonwealth part of the sweden as well i believe uh yeah part of sweden the swedish empire and of course the russian empire the largest cities after Riga are Dokopils and Vek Liapaya, and the two busiest and international airports are Riga International and Liapaya International. Now, Riga may be the capital, but it's a river city on the Dalgava River, not a port city. So Pretty most cool. shipments must come in either at Vinskiz or in Liapaya on the Baltic coast. The funny thing is, even though Latvia has a decent-sized coast, it owns virtually none of the islands that come with it. Even this little guy, Ruhnu, which belongs to Estonia, even though it's closer to Latvia. I mainland. give it to Latvia. Dude, can I just have one island <laughs> so I can build a patrol station? 
No. Oh, and if you look closely at the border with Estonia, they have Balga, which is a town split in half by the two nations. Now, if there's one thing about Latvia that makes it stick out, it would have to be the architecture. Riga is famously known for its nouveau style buildings, which won the title of European okay, that's pretty culture creepy. back in 2014. <laughs> the city has over 4,000 historic wooden buildings, more than any other European city. And of course, if you Google Latvia, Super it's hard creepy. not to come across the most iconic building, the House of Blackheads, originally built in the 1400s. It was bombed Still in creepy. World War II and rebuilt. It's beautiful. But the country does come with an austere backdrop. Back in Soviet times, things got pretty morbid and you still see the residue to this very day. You can see ghost towns that were once used to house Soviet officials and their families, like Skrudna 1, an abandoned radar station village complete with decaying Skrudna. apartments, schools, and gymnasiums, all adorned with Lenin and Soviet imagery left to rot. Yeah, you get a lot of those in former communist states. They even took states. a military prison and made it into the world's creepiest hotel. The Karausta Military Prison Hotel, in which you can pay to be treated like a prisoner of war in World War II Nazi Germany times. Your accommodations include getting yelled at and arrested, sent to a dark, damp, gritty room with no beds, only a light mattress and blankets on the floor, no room service, and you get locked in your room. Latvia! That's for the of which, masochists. Of interest, might include <laughs> Riga's old city, the Basilica of Aglona, Turaida and Koknese Castle ruins, the Monument of Freedom, Rundal Palace, sometimes called the Versailles of the North, the Art Nuovo District and the Art Nuovo Museum it's in Riga, cool. the Mark Rothko Museum, pretty much the entire city of Sesis, Ziemelu Northern Forts, and the Dacopil's Fortress. All right, that covers that. Now we get into okay, Latvia's land cool. makeup. And to add to the somber undertones, it's going to get a bit swampy. <laughs> Is there a Shrek? Well, I find All the Shrek. lands of the Baltic areas are like copy, paste, done. So if you watch the Estonia episode, you'll probably know what I'm going to say. Latvia is okay. located on... Okay, so that's the end of the episode. So thank you all for watching. As always, take care. <laughs> okay, just the kidding. East European plain, generally a flat area, on average, no more than 100 meters above sea level, with mild rolling hills every so often. The highest point, Geising Kaltz, is only about 312 meters. Fun side note, Latvia actually had a little... Bosnia is like... Estonia, which kind of went like this. You know, Estonia, you got some great forests. You know, I, I admire that about you. Oh, psh, come on. You're are nice too. Oh, well, <laughs> you know, either way, it's not like we're going to be climbing any huge summits, right? Right? Because we are flat countries. We are flat. Oh, you're telling me my highest peak only 318 meters. How about yours? 312. Give me a sec. Are they just going to oh, add uh, dirt? What a coincidence. Uh, mine's basically the same height, just, you know, a little bit taller, but it's. Yeah, just whatever. <laughs> Then in 2012, the tower was demolished because of safety concerns. About 10% of the country is made up really? of peat bogs and swamps, and over half the country is forested. That's actually an increase as Latvia is experiencing natural afforestation. That, that's the opposite of deforestation, because just, just so you know, it's... Yeah, we get it. Just keep going, yeah. Paul. The country has over 12,500 rivers. The longest one, as mentioned before, is oh, Algava. And Latvia has the widest waterfall in Europe, the Ventus Rumba, about 250 meters count. wide, and the largest lake in the country it's being too the small. Bronze. Otherwise, economically, Latvia personally. has seen an overall huge GDP resurgence since the independence from the Soviet Union. Basically, they had to switch everything from state-owned to privatization. And when that happens, people usually get very creative. I mean, why do you think they built that prison hotel? Their economy is mostly run off of industrial goods like textiles, wood products, pharmaceuticals, and products processed foods. Agriculture-wise, Latvians love two things, meat and dairy. Almost every meal will have these two things. If you don't know anything about Baltic cuisine, basically it's hearty, heavy meals with rye bread, lots of butter and fat with little or no spices, except for maybe dill and caraway seeds. They love caraway. They even put it in their cheeses. Of course, they also have their own specialties like sklandrausis, those bacon and onion bun things, and the national liquor, Riga Black Balsam, which has like 24 different ingredients and it supposedly cool. cures illness as a test to Catherine the Great when she visited and drank some. On oh, the national animals are the white wagtail bird and the two-spotted ladybug. However, Latvia is also famous for the blue cows. National animal, Zeme. ladybug. Is that it? Uh, tallest peak, longest river, largest lake, economy, food, national animals. I put a skit in it, yada yada. Okay, I okay, yeah, yeah, I think we got it. Okay, moving on. Now, it's often said that if you want to learn how Europeans were speaking in the Stone Age, learn Latvian or Lithuanian. First of all, Latvia has about 2 million people and has the second lowest ratio of men to women in the world at 0.85 men per one woman. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, hang on, let me, let me try to figure out the math. Second lowest ratio of men to women in the world at 0.85 men per... Oh, so there's way more women than men. So I do have a chance in Latvia, it seems. Uh, this is unfortunately mostly due to the fact... Um, I'm putting jokes aside now. Uh, due to the fact that during World War II, World War I, they lost a lot of their men, basically, t due to warfare. As you can see, not that many um, Latvians, Estonians, and Lithuanians, so many Russians and the Germans, and fighting them all off would, was just absolutely crippling to their um to their male population basically so this is why uh it, it, including estonia as well there's still more men than uh women due to that fact because they were just 
murdered, killed off in warfare. But um, surprisingly, in Bosnia, it's kind of a, mitch, a mismatch of men and women. There's the same amount of men, same amount of men and women in Bosnia, even though there was, a, as you know, a pretty brutal, brutal war not too long ago. And but well, it's slowly starting to become long ago. Twenty four years ago, it ended. So it's going on twenty five years. Mm. It's going in, going into its thirties, uh, the the end of the war in Bosnia. But we still have enough men and women, which is weird. But they don't. At 0.85 men per one woman. Remember, Estonia was the highest. The country is made up of 63 percent of people that identify <laughs> I, as yay, I guess. Latvian. <laughs> About a quarter are Russian, and the rest are made up of other groups, mostly Belarusians, Ukrainians, Poles, and Lithuanians. They use the euro as their currency. They use the Type C plug outlet, and they They're drive still the Russians. Right side of the road. About the sex ratio thing, just like the other Baltic states, Latvia experienced a huge population loss during World War II. In fact, almost 13 percent of the entire country was killed. One of the highest percentages in Europe, and of course, the vast majority. Oh my God! If I just waited a couple of seconds. <laughs> Oh, I always do this. Why do I do this? Many of these people were men. And just like all the other Baltic states, a lot of these women lot to these supermodels yeah. were insanely tall, like seven foot one, two point one five meter tall. Ulyana Semyonova, who helped Latvia get all these gold medals back in the Soviet times in basketball, and she was the first non US woman enshrined in the basketball hall of fame. Yeah, that is a tall woman. Today Latvian and Lithuanian are the only two Baltic languages left in existence. The last relative old Prussian went extinct in the nineteenth century. That. Basically these two languages are related and even have some similar words like Labsvakars versus Labasvakar. Skola versus Skolos, and they both use Sveiki. Basically, Latvians have told me Sveiki. that to them, Lithuanian sounds like an older, more ancient version of Latvian. And if they listen really hard, they might be able to pick up a few words and phrases. But overall, it's still kind of difficult to understand. Will you marry me? And keep in mind, <laughs> most Latvians learn at least a little bit of Russian, since a quarter of their population is Russian. However, English is more favored for business and global outreach. Now, here's where things get a little unique. The Baltics were one of the last places to convert to Christianity in Europe. Faith-wise, about a third identify at least That's how they became. with the Lutheran Christian. Church quarter with Catholic and about 20% Orthodox. However, many of the people are not very religious. However, what's interesting is that the ancient pagan traditions are heavily syncretized and still celebrated today. Basically, there are about 10 main Baltic tribes that eventually merged into what became Lithuania and Latvia, whereas the Finno-Urgic tribe, the Livonians, became Estonia, all of which started out as pagan. Baltic paganism incorporated a Rolodex of gods, goddesses, and spirits that mm -hmm. took over various elements and concepts of daily life. You had the fate goddess, Laima, the fertility and harvest god, Yumis, Zemis Mate, the mother of earth and so on to this day dressing up in traditional pagan influence have you noticed like every single like pagan or ancient ancient mythology religion whatever uh always had like the same similar configuration of gods didn't it and it was always like the god of thunder was the main god or the more powerful god um yeah i'm seeing a huge correlation between all these like mythologies Influenced masks and costumes during festivals is yeah, widely practiced. Is that during the KKK? Solstice festivals. They take solstice very seriously. They even have like an ancient traditional pagan calendar with symbols and everything like that. One of my Latvian subscribers sent this to me for Flag Friday. Thank you. And speaking of festivals, just like Estonia and Lithuania, every five years they hold a song and dance festival where the entire country pretty much gets involved. Oh shoot, history. Yeah, okay. So before I get into this, if you really want a cool visual, just check out this cool stop motion video by YouTube I channel actually did. Ensis99. So many of you guys have sent it to me. I don't even you don't even have to speak latvian to understand it it's, it's it's really cool check it out but in the best way i can i did see that paganism in tribal ago. kingdoms northern crusades the state of livonia germans danes poles lithuanians swedish all take turns at invading <laughs> finally russians Damn. come in world war uh -oh. one war for independence they get their first republic for i guess they weren't really a part of the polish lithuanian commonwealth i know it like i can't remember how north the uh, polish lithuanian commonwealth but it went more east to west than from north to south I don't know. I, I, I gotta look up the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth again. <laughs> For a few decades, then Russia comes in and is like, JK, I'm back. They become a Soviet Republic state. Tons of people die. 1941, Nazi occupation. Tons of people die again. Soviets come in and reclaim Latvia. Yada, yada, yada. All the Soviet years, Russians move in. 1991, independence through the singing revolution that they did with all the other Baltic states. 2000s, they went through an economic boom. 2008 recession. And today they're recovering and doing fine, mostly. Some notable people from Latvia or of Latvian descent might include Yanis Kak. Day, Andres Pumpurs, Christianis Barons, Rainis and his wife Aspasia, Arvins Blumenthal's, aka the Crocodile Dundee, Mark Rothko, Jacob W. Davis, Steve Irwin Martin of Jeans, Latvia, Christophs Porzinkis, the music group The Hobos, Frederick Wilhelm <laughs> Oswald, Alexander Slime, Anatoly Soloviev, Ginta Lapina, Bill Rabane, and the music group Carnival Youth. Whew. So, as you can see, Latvia is an interesting tradition holding, somewhat dark past oriented nation that moves with haste. Let's see who's tagging along with the ride with them now, shall we? 
Now, in school, have you ever been sent to detention, and while in detention, you started talking to the person next to you and found out that you actually had a lot in common? Yeah, it's kind of like how Latvia made friends. As a member of the EU since 2003, as well as NATO and the Council of Europe, Latvia has significantly opened up to their Western counterparts and has seen tons of diplomatic measures taken from the Germans, French, Polish, and Italians. Latvians get along pretty well with Ukrainians and Georgians <laughs> as they shared the same Soviet-occupied past, and a significant minority of people in Latvia are Ukrainian. Iceland I think was Ukrainians actually the first country to recognize missing. their independence, and they shared the same seats on the Council of the Baltic Sea States, even though Iceland is not a Baltic state. Like, like not at all. Wait, huh? <laughs> but when it comes to their best friends, most Latvians would probably say Lithuania and Estonia, even though Estonia pays more attention to Finland. All three Baltic states grew up together and graduated college, but Estonia got I closer to Finland, to Finland, and out of jealousy, <laughs> Latvia kind of tried to hook up with Sweden, but Sweden was like, eh. Lithuania is like the twin that was separated at birth. Latvian territory was taken over by Germans in the 13th century, and Lithuania kind of went off and created its own empire. Oh yeah, it was Poles. part of the In the end, though, the two Polish sisters Lithuania. have always held on as the last surviving Balts in the world, and as crazy as things got, they will always be there for each other. In conclusion, Latvia has had a lot of pressure over the years from numerous factors, but they still pull through by embracing the austerity that enshrines them. Stay tuned, Lebanon is coming up next. Okay, that's gonna that's gonna be uh, interesting. It's like uh, the Bosnia of uh, the middle. Oh my! What was I always saw framed there? God damn it! That's, uh, Le Lebanon is basically the Bosnia of the Middle East. Kinda, technically. Yes. No. I don't know. Welcome back to Flag Slash Fan Friday. I hope you like the Latvia episode. All right, so you know the deal. Before we jump into this, I gotta add or fix stuff from the episode. For one, the word for school is not skolos in Lithuanian. It's this word. I think it's pronounced mokikla. However, I like what Latvian what geographer Mark wrote on Facebook. <laughs> it does sound close to the word mokikla in Latvian, which means place of torture, school, <laughs> torture, debt. That pretty much goes hand Makes in hand. Makes sense. Mark, you totally win. Also, I accidentally said that Latvia joined the EU in 2003. It actually joined in 2004. I forgot to mention that the shape of the country kind of looks like a vulture head there's also kind of like an ongoing joke that latvia is like obsessed with potatoes and also i forgot to mention that latvia has the tallest average height of women in the world i'm guessing that uliana Semyonova kind of just brought that average up like by five <laughs> centimeters all by herself yeah. so i think those are kind of like Funny. the biggest things that i wanted to address but otherwise uh yeah let's just kind of go into it so without further ado <laughs> Oh, poor Latvia and Lithuania. You guys are the last surviving Baltic peoples on the planet. Y'all gotta make some babies. Completely unrelated, the flag. <laughs> the flag of Latvia is a horizontal tri-band. Yeah, come on, man. Stripes, Stop watching my videos and get, get down more. Bands on the top and bottom with a thinner white band in the middle. Okay, now here's where things get a little suspicious. We all know that this flag looks almost completely identical to the flag of Austria. But what's even crazier are the backstory similarities. By the way, guys, I'm holding my mic like this now because whenever... Is it the same where the guy took off the belts? He was all full of blood except for the, the part where where he took off his belts was white. I clip it over here, it just kind of distorts the sound and muffles it, so I just figured it, it's better if I hold it. Now, in the Austria episode, I explained the flag, you know, before this spin-off was created. And we talked about how the flag represented the legend of Duke Leopold V during the siege of Acre in the 12th century, and how he took off his belt after battle from his white surcoat, revealing a white line around his waist that was not drenched in blood from battle. Similarly, the Latvian legend kind of goes like this. According to the rhymed Chronicle of Livonia, there was a wounded chief of a Latvian tribe from Sesis during some battle in the 13th century. He lied down on a white sheet which was stained on the edges <laughs> with his blood, but the middle uh, was left white. Just... Then the people were like, sweet, let's use this flag in our next battle and supposedly they just won rolled the on way, it i animated that so yeah austria be like hmm didn't you just plagiarize nope just coincidence so yeah that's kind of the story of how the flag came to be oh and it also stands for it was literally made by blood once again, you guys know him. Thank you, Ken, for making that animation. Ken, you handed in your work on time. You've survived another week of not getting fired. In appreciation, I will give you five minutes of free time outside of your cage on Tuesdays at 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah, these Ken jokes are probably just going to get a little darker yeah. every week. Anyway, keep in mind, this flag was kind of like an on-again, off-again flag of Latvia. It was adopted in the 13th century, and then all those invasions came in from other nations. Then finally, back in 1991, they went back to the Latvian flag. All right, enough on that. Coat of arms time. The coat of arms contains a shield with three stars above it, representing the three historical provinces of Latvia, Vizeme, Latgale, and Kurtzeme Zemgale, which would later become the Duchy of Courland and Semigalia. The gold sun on the blue field represents freedom, with seven 
17 rays symbolizing the 17 Latvian inhabited districts. Holding the shield and also portrayed in smaller versions at the bottom of the shield are a red lion on the left representing Kurzeme and Zemgale, while the silver griffin on the right represents Vitzeme and Lakale. The base of the image contains branches of European oak tied by a ribbon fashioned with the colors and configuration of the Latvian flag. Of course, prior to this, they had the Soviet Republic coat of arms, the Courland coat of arms, the Duke Ernst Johann von Byron coat of arms, and so on. So yeah, basically... Oh yeah, I forgot I was doing a video. I was down <laughs> to a bunch of tribal territory backstory, but in the end, it, it all comes commenting together to there. display the story of a unique people group. All right, so that's about it. Uh, you know what time it is? Geogra fan mail time. All right, I'm pretty excited because... Okay, pretty I'm pretty not excited, so... Because <laughs> it's the end of the video, and uh, I do watch those in my, uh, in my own time. Sometimes there's something interesting that goes on there, but not a part of my video, unfortunately. So uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and as always, take care. We're moving on to Lebanon.